Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the RetroPie Toolkit. This is a pretty awesome toolkit that was put out by Easy Hacks a long while back. He has expanded upon it over time, added some new scripts, and just made life a lot easier for a lot of us who work on you know RetroPie images and, and whatnot. So essentially what this is, it's a toolkit that has a handful of scripts that you can use to simplify actions and things that you would want to do within RetroPie while you're setting things up or you know if you want to check on some stuff it does make life a lot easier so today I wanted to take a look at this and show what some of these do I don't use all of these but a good number of them I do so I'll go over them and I'll talk about the ones I use and how they work and what they actually do so you'll make sure that your RetroPie uh, system has SSH enabled so you can connect through your network to use these scripts. Everything here are scripts that Easy Hacks wrote. These are not ripped from anywhere. He wrote all these scripts and they have all worked flawlessly for me since I began using these. So we'll go ahead and take a look at a few of them. Add video splash screens. I have never used that. My assumption is it does something to add video splash screens, so I can't really speak on that one. Aim track sets up aim track. Disable, expand to external drive. There's a disable and enable. Pretty self-explanatory. A lot of uh, theme creators, or not necessarily theme creators, but people who are doing base images and whatnot will have those types of scripts already in the system that you can you know, use within the RetroPie configuration screen. I have never used them through the toolkit. Disk space is an interesting one. If you just open it up, you'll get this screen here. And essentially what this one is doing is it's just telling me how much space I have left on my SD card on my current RetroPie system that I'm working on. So as you see here, it popped up. I had 45 gigs left. Enable cheats directory. Never use that. Enable power button. So this one's a good one. I used to do this by hand and just type in the commands and whatnot. But if you want to use the standard power button script, and I've done a video on the power button script before, you can go ahead and just double click this and it'll run through, install that script on your system, and you're ready to install a power button without having to type anything. So that is one of the great ones. I've started using that as well. Flip Flop, Mega Drive, and PC Engine. So this one right here is one that a lot of people ask about. This makes life a heck of a lot easier instead of editing config files. So what this does is Mega Drive and, you know, Mega Drive was what the Sega Genesis was called in pretty much the entire world other than the US or North America. And the PC Engine is what the Turbo Graphics was in Japan. So a lot of times you'll have an image or a theme and you'll put, you know, Sega Genesis and Turbo Graphics games on there and it'll say Mega Drive and PC Engine. And that might not be what you grew up with, so you'll want it to say Genesis and Turbo Graphics instead. So if you enable this script, and I'm not gonna do it right here because I actually am transferring a bunch of stuff to a RetroPie image, but if you click this, it would just simply run that script, boom, when you re-log into your Pi, instead of it saying Mega Drive, it's gonna say Genesis. Instead of it saying PC Engine, it's gonna say Turbo Graphics. So that one is really cool. Another one that I find really handy that just you know makes life a lot easier is log into RetroPie. So what this one is going to do is actually call Putty and log into your RetroPie. Just like this, so it's logging in, and then boom, we are on our terminal for our RetroPie. So here, you can go ahead and work on things, install scripts, you know, edit files, that kind of cool stuff. So I really dig using that as a simplified measure of getting into my Pi. Nintendo 64 minor tweaks. So this is going to tweak some little things here and there. You know, it's going to give the, the high res textures and, and I think a few other minor things to try to increase performance on Nintendo 64. I have used it and have noticed, you know, little, little performance increases, but typically I don't use um, too many Nintendo 64 games, so 
I only use once I know 100% works, so this is going to make some of the games look better. You can try it out. I've used it before, but really haven't noticed much because all it really does is enable the high res textures like it says here. But it can help with some performance, so check it out just in case. You know, Like I said, I only use a handful of Nintendo 64 games and I don't really tweak with them too much. I have them set the way I know they run. And then the no audio fix. So this one, it just says, try this if you do not have audio. If you double click this, it's gonna run through a script and, and fix your audio issues. I did use this once and it worked for me. It was quite a while ago, so I don't remember exactly what the issue was, but I remember I did not have audio. And this was, like I said, a long while ago. And I used this script and boom, I had audio. So that was pretty cool. Now you have disable and enable overscan. So if you have black borders or if the picture runs off of the screen, and these are all pretty self-explanatory. They, they explain that when you, you know, look at the actual file name, you can go ahead and use those and boom, it'll run through the script, get rid of the black borders or make sure the picture's not running off the screen. I have used these before and they do work. Power override, I have never used this, but it says use if your power supply is crap. So I know Easy Hacks is big on, you know, looking at power supplies and, you know, there's a lot of junk ones out there. So I think this just tweaks some things and you don't get the little notifications anymore if you have a crappy power supply that can't really power your Pi properly. But I would recommend not using the script and just getting a good power supply. But I'm pretty sure this tweaks a handful of things to try to to remedy that but like I said to play it safe make sure you got a good power supply reboot retro pie so this one comes in handy if for some reason your system freezes up or you just need to reboot and you're too lazy to go through the menu I have used this quite a quite a bit to reboot when I'm doing certain edits to to double check make sure everything looks good so that does come in handy reset controller configs so this essentially is just going to go through and take a look at the the reset emulation station controller config option that's in the configurations option within the RetroPie setup uh, you know in, in those menus if you just do it through this it just runs through reboots boom your controllers have been removed and now you have to redo your controls so that comes in handy for people who are building images who are you know trying to, to copy an image and they want to give it to somebody or they want to put it on another system they want it to start fresh where you just input your new controls so that definitely comes in handy shut down emulation station so that one I haven't really used too much but essentially it'll just shut down emulation station go to the terminal now the one that I have used quite a bit is shut down retro pie. So shutting down retro pie does exactly what it says, it shuts down your system. So why would that come in handy? Well, it can come in handy for a couple reasons. One, your system froze, nothing nothing to do, boom, shut it down, reboot whatever you got to do. That's one thing. Another thing is if you are working on an image and you're just done with it, and like I said earlier, if you're too lazy to go through you know, the options to shut down your system, you can just shut it down through your PC. Another situation, which kind of goes back to the reset controller configs, is if you're working on an image and say you're done, you're ready to pop that bad boy out, you reset controller configs, boom, you cannot shut down your system safely anymore because you cannot control anything. You can't get into a system or, or you know, into anything you can't press a button and get into the the shutdown options or anything like that so if that's the case I typically will run reset controller configs get out of all that get back into emulation station and then I will hit shutdown retro pie turn my system off and I'm good to go comes in handy it really does for me anyway temp monitor tracks the CPU temp so I have looked at this quite a bit essentially it's just gonna look at what the temperature is on your system so I'm sitting at 120 degrees Fahrenheit 49 degrees Celsius my system's a little warm right now reason being is this little fella has been running for over 24 hours non-stop so it's just gonna call bring them up take a look at it you can monitor your temperature so that's pretty cool really comes in handy if you want to check that out or if you're testing out a new case that has you know any kind of thermal you know 
agent to it, you know, a, a flirt case and stuff like that. If you want to test the, the temp, see what, what it's actually doing with, you know, the claims that that case has. Or if you put a dual fan on there, a big heat sink or a heat sink case, whatever, you can monitor the temperature this way. Or if you're doing some heavy work transferring, which is what I'm doing right now, or, or doing a lot of graphic intensive stuff, you can jump in here, monitor your temperature at the same time while you're working on things and just keep tabs on it. So that kind of comes in handy. Just depends on, you know, if you really care to know what temperature your system's running at. So there you go, guys. Like I said, I don't use all of these, but a, hand, a good handful of them I do. A, a couple of them I use all the time. This comes in handy for a lot of us. A lot of this stuff to do it manually is not that difficult, but you know, if you're constantly having to type stuff or go through things, it can be time consuming and this just makes life a lot easier when you are working with Retro Pi. So I appreciate you guys stopping in. If you have any questions, throw them out there in the comments. Link will be in the description so you can download this and start using it. Like I said, I love it. Big shout out to Easy Hacks for supplying this to us. It, it's saved my life quite a bit as far as working on retro pie images, so appreciate it. And with that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Boom!